Hello guys and welcome. So this is a Dark Souls 3 beginners video. If you don't know what Dark Souls is, this will explain everything about it and explain to you the roles of the new game and how it's changed over the generations. Anyway, enjoy. You are the chosen and dead to relight the flame and bring all of the unkindled back. You are the last line of this and are basically pan B. Now, let's move on to st the classes and which types there is. The first starting class you see when starting the game is a knight. This is the basic class and one of the most popular classes in the game, having a sword, a shield, and pretty decent armor. But the major thing that takes the knight out of anything else is they have a parrying shield. A parrying shield allows you to counter one of the moves of an enemy. This can then allow you to gain or deal massive amounts of damage, similar to a backstab, but instead you stab them in the front. The mercenary is a very interesting class, as it has a medium armor set, a big shield and dual swords. This means that it can use one sword and a shield or two swords at the same time but cannot deflect any damage using those swords meaning that you have to get your hit off perfectly otherwise you will take larger amounts of damage without that shield. Later on you'll get stronger swords and much larger shields. The warrior is a heavy hitter. They have high amounts of damage using a heavy axe. Also has heavy armor and a shield that deflects damage. Most of the time, in later game, you'll find him using much greater swords and higher armor. The herald uses spears to get enemies from range. This does a decent amount of damage but doesn't do high amounts of damage. It also has medium armor and a shield that doesn't parry but will allow you to defend from incoming attacks. The thief is a low armored class, with a dagger. This means that he has to come in and come in close to do damage. It also has a shield to deflect damage but can use a bow and arrow to kill ranged enemies. This is limited though and you have to buy more arrows using souls. Assassins uses pointed weapons, allowing them to use ranged attacks against characters. They also have a medium armor set and have a special spell called Spook. This allows them to go silent and then as an assassin sneak up on their enemy and backstab them. The Sorcerer. The Sorcerer wields the use of magic, with magic missiles and other casting abilities. Later on in the game you get more stronger moves, even enchantments on your swords. The Pyro class is what you expect, he's a firecaster. Now at first you start off with a small fireball and are allowed to throw that so kindly. But after a while you get a lot more stronger spells and find a caster itself that will teach you those. Stuff like vomiting boulders or 
larger fireballs, maybe lava. All of that is in the game. Cleric is a medium damaging, low armoured class with a shield. But the main difference between it and the rest of the classes is it has healing abilities and also a force push that allows enemies to stay away from you if they corner you. The deprived class. Now, most of the time, that is chosen to have a bit of fun, as it has no armor, one of the weakest shields in the game, and one of the weakest weapons. But, as you can see from the stats, all of them are tens, which means you are balanced out on every single stat. The first boss of the game is very simple. You activate him by pulling out a sword. He acts like a statue. After that, he attacks you with slow moving attacks. After attacking, roll in and attack his body. Halfway through, he decides to transform into a massive creature. At this point, fire is a very useful tool, as you can see from the video. Once dead, you get the cold sword and you head over to the fire, fire living shrine, where your entire adventure starts. This is the Firelink Shrine. Now, this is the main hub of the game and where you'll be going to level up, buy items and upgrade equipment. The first person you'll meet up with will allow you to level up. There's also a shop that if you bring ashes to, will allow you to buy more items. And finally, a blacksmith. If you bring him items, he will upgrade your weapons and allow you to get stronger. You can find more NPCs like pyromancers and spellcasters later on in the game to help you increase in that area too. There are two main ways of playing this game in multiplayer form. The first one is using a white soapstone. This item allows you to be summoned into people's games and help them with the game. But you can also use red eye orbs and red cracked eye orbs to invade people's worlds and kill the host. White Soapstone can help you find your friends and help them take on bosses that they won't be able to get past. Originally there was a White Soapstone and you weren't able to help your friends at the later past. But with a quick change in Dark Souls 3, they do this. 
with the redstone, in fact, it goes opposite ways. You invade the player's world and try to take them on. Once defeated, you get an item, but if you die, you lose all your souls where you, where you originally were. In conclusion, Dark Souls 3 is one of my favourite games out right now. I've put a lot of hours into it and it's generally difficult, well, from the start. If you're going into a game like this thinking it's going to be really easy, it's not going to be. And that's most of the time what people take away from Dark Souls. But it'll be enjoyable if you were to play it with friends. Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Bye.